And now we shift categories. Something more dirt, more dirt. <laughs> Is the last three projects. Uh, now after a sequence of uh, architectural projects that have been realized, so there have been uh, needed to be uh, precise enough, uh, although they, they are borderline, you know, to, to find a company that would build this 2,300 square meter in a completely new process with a machine that isn't, that isn't, that didn't exist, uh, with software that didn't exist and uh, hasn't been easy, but we found. Now the three projects we'll show are completely experimental and are uh, deeply material in their nature, uh, but also deeply uh, uh, experimental. And the first one, remote material deposition, is questioning the relationship spatial relationship between the machine and the building. You know, normally in all the projects we have seen, we have building parts that are small enough or machines that are big enough to be bigger than the building part they process, more or less. You know. and the last, this is gigantic gantry of uh, 40 meter length. In other cases, it's uh, the robot and so on. But in architect, it's, architecture, it's implicit that the building will always be bigger than the biggest machine that you could possibly uh, build. And even if you have a big machine, then you take a big building, and then the building is again bigger as the machine. So there is this point. So what the remote material position asks is, could we shoot the material in place from a remote location? Of course, again, this is a, it has a playful ironic way there is this uh, implicit this uh, 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 you know I wouldn't say uh, military but also uh, authoritative implication because uh, ballistic you know the whole uh, the science of ballistic was developed as a war uh, uh, tool and uh, also the concept of feedback you know what you see here is uh, you have a machine the machine shoots something somewhere and because there are so many factors you know you have the weight of the body that you shoot then you have a possible uh, wind uh, then you have uh, uh, imprecisions in the machine and so on uh, this most of the time this part will not land exactly where you want it to be. You know, so at first you you have to deal with a certain level of uncertainty. And secondly, you have to observe where it landed in order to be able to correct for the next time. And this is in, in military application, this was feedback. So one is standing on the hill telling the other, okay, up and down with the camera. And this is exactly the same thing, but it's a camera registering where it landed. And the material has to be engineered, this is clay, you know, according to the process, because you don't want this to land and then jump away. You know, you want the piece of material to land, to deform in order to absorb the energy, and then to stay as much as possible in place. So clay has then proved to be the perfect material, and this is how the process then looked like. Looked like. Now here you see this project now that are shot onto the wall. Most of them, through this feedback mechanism, land where they should land. Others land, you know just somewhere else, but uh, the, these are also important because then they give, this give the correction and tell the system that the system is out of, uh, of, of tune. Yeah. And you have a, a result that is, again for us, very interesting because here the process itself is readable in the end and product. 
you know, you would never design something like this. Look at the surface, you know, it's way too complex. You could not build it, you know, if uh, it's an, it would be crazy ornament, you know. But here it's the result plus it's not just something, you know, but you see these parts that are deformed and they tell the story, the physic physically tell the story of from where they were coming, you know, and how they collided with the other and how they deformed. Yeah. So you haven't built anything with this, but you would like to at a certain point. It's very beautiful.